Working memory. Another type of brain training that is useful and that is backed by a lot of evidence is a brain training game Dual and Back. The Dual and Back test is an exercise that requires you to concentrate on a sequence of numbers or letters that are also changing color. Your job is to press a button when you notice a match or a repetition. So in the sequence 1, 2, 4, 7, 9, 10, 10, you would press the button because there were two 10s. Likewise, you would press the button during this sequence. It's a dual and back because you are looking for two things at once. 1, 2, 4, 7, 9, 10, 3 because the colors match. Here, N equals 1. So you are looking for matches that go back 1. But as the game progresses, the value of N increases. So if N equals 2, then you press the button when this happens. 1, 2, 4, 1, 7, 9, 10, 4, 3. And you ignore the two black numbers that were only spaced one apart. This is hard work, and it is effective because it requires you to hold information in your mind and then compare it with new information, tasking the working memory. Playing chess also requires you to test your working memory because you need to remember the positions of all the pieces on the board and you need to think about possible positions several moves ahead. So, the working memory then is the part of the memory that you use to hold on to temporary information that you are currently working with. This allows you to manipulate that information and it is highly important for a vast range of different tasks and different activities. But what's interesting is that working memory is actually a little more complex than we at first thought, and there may be even more useful ways to train it. A different way to look at working memory. So conventionally, we view working memory as a store where we keep information briefly, before moving it to short-term and then long-term memory. If you are asked to remember a phone number, then you place it in your short-term memory until you write it down. Psychologists used to describe the size of the working memory as being 7 plus minus 2, meaning that at the upper end, we can remember 9 pieces of information, and at the lower end, we can remember 5. So, if someone gives you a number 10 digits long, you shouldn't be able to remember it without assistance. It was also once thought that we had different modes for remembering this information. The Visio Spatial Scratch Pad, for instance, was what we used in order to picture the items in a room and remember their positions. Meanwhile, the phonological loop is what we use to remember acoustic information by, repeating it back to ourselves. More recent research, though, suggests that working memory might be a little more complex than that. That's because working memory appears to not have all that much in common with other types of memory at all. In fact, there doesn't seem to be a brain area associated with working memory. And instead, it seems that working memory works by internalizing our thoughts and visualizing them. In other words, when you are trying to hang on to seven numbers, you're not actually remembering them at all. But instead, you're visualizing them with your mind's eye. Brain scans show that if you imagine something happening, you actually light up the same brain regions as though you were really doing that thing. So, for example, if you imagine playing football, you activate the areas of the motor cortex as though you were really kicking a ball. When you repeat numbers to yourself, areas of your auditory cortex light up. This is what working memory really is. It's not memory at all, but rather attention. The ability to internalize thought and then focus on that thought. And this makes working memory an incredibly important thing to train, because it corresponds to your ability to visualize and to juggle and manipulate information. It allows you to plan ahead. It allows you to picture the positions of other players in the pitch during sports. It allows you to juggle all the relevant information when in conversation to give the best response. It even allows you to manipulate a map in your mind's eye for improving navigation. In short, working memory is one of the key skills to enhance for better performance across the board. And because it actually amounts to visualization, that makes visualization itself worth practicing. And because it also amounts to concentration, that, too, is something you need to practice focusing on. This is your ability to focus on your internal constructs, which in turn gives you the ability to manipulate and manage information in your mind. Meditation Meditation is one of the best things you can do to encourage more brain plasticity, and it has been shown in studies to increase cortical thickness and gray matter. Moreover, 
It has also been shown to be one of the most effective tools for strengthening your working memory. The reason for this is that meditation essentially boils down to nothing more than applied concentration and focus. While many of us think that meditation has some kind of esoteric subtext, the reality is that it is actually very simple and very practical. Meditation is simply the conscious decision to empty your mind or to focus on just one stimulus, such as a mantra or such as a visualization. In doing this, you actually quiet all your other brain areas and they can begin to shut down. This has the benefit of slowing brain waves, meaning that there is overall less activity across the brain, and it means that you can overcome stress and trigger the rest and digest state. At the same time, though, it also means you become better at choosing what you want to focus on. Not only does this boost your mental focus and your ability to concentrate, but it also means that you gain greater working memory. Starting meditation is difficult for many people, but if you're struggling, Try committing to just three hours a week to begin with. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.